What's up, Facebook? I'm doing a little bit more module testing because this thing kind of threw me for a little bit of a loop. When I unplug the spout connector, the car didn't stall out right away. So I thought, hmm, maybe there's something going on. My buddy Keith uh, tipped me into the fact that that can be a problem with wiring sometimes. So I wanted to make a uh, darn sure I was making the right call on this module. So I thought I'd go back and test uh, specifically for that. So what I've done is I've taken the, the module power uh, signal out and I've switched it over to the spout signal. So the way uh, TFI works is the distributor makes a signal called PIP and PIP goes through the module to the computer. The computer modifies the PIP signal and sends it back to the distributor as a spout signal. That stands for spark output and PIP stands for profile ignition pickup. So the spark output is basically the signal that times the engine. The TFI module will use the PIP signal if there is no spout signal, and it'll use the spout signal if there is a spout signal. That's why when you unplug the spout connector, the timing goes to 10, you're taking the computer out of the equation. Well, the concern comes in, what if the computer is timing something terribly wrong, and what happens is the spout signal is completely inaccurate it just doesn't get delivered at the right time. It can cause the engine to stall even though there's nothing wrong with the module. And the reason is the timing's way out of loop. You know, like negative 70 degrees or something like that. So the only way to be sure with this thing is to catch it in the act with the spout signal removed. I did do that once, not on film, but the problem with it is somehow with this module it works opposite of most of the modules I've seen. It actually runs better when the module gets hot and runs horrible when the module's cold. So every time I try to retest it, it's taking longer and longer for the car to stall out, which is kind of frustrating, right? So, um, but I did I did catch it one time with the spout connector removed. It does still stall. The call is the same. It's still an ignition module either way. Because really, either way, the module's in charge of firing the coil, and the coil's not firing. The only exception to that that I can think of would be if the computer is telling it to fire at the completely wrong time. So um, the, the, the spout signal would move radically if that happened. Anyhow, um, what I found was that when I was, uh, when I was watching this thing, the spout signal and the pip signal stayed together. They weren't separating. And uh, let me see if I can show you this in real time. This is with the spout connector plugged in. The green trace is spout, the blue trace is pip. And I'll have to slow this down a little bit to a much quicker time base so that you guys can actually see the waveforms here. So what you see with this notch that keeps appearing is that the notch, the tail end of the notch on a pip signal lines up with the falling edge of the spout signal and the module's doing more work monitoring that than not monitoring it. So it's kind of a, like a double signal there if you call it that or a hidden signal. If I unplug that, the module creates a spout signal that looks exactly like the pip signal. It's identical and neither one of them have notches. Well looking at these notches, I know that if the notches represent the, uh, the firing of the spout signal, and that so does the, the falling edge of the spout signal, then if I have a problem with the spout signal, the notch will be seriously misplaced or missing entirely. And what I found was that my notch signal uh, was there everywhere except for the signature pip, which does, I don't know if you can see that occasionally, but it doesn't have one. Let me see if I can throw a trigger on that and you can see it. Or maybe it'll stand still a little bit better this way. I know the lighting's horrible, guys. I'm sorry. So you can see with that, that every time the spout signal sends a signal back to the computer, the PIP sensor signal 
gets pulled down the ground just a little bit at the tailing edge here. And uh, so we know that that represents the timing value versus the pip value. The difference between the far right edge of this blue signal and the notched edge of this blue signal would be whatever the computer's moving the timing by. So uh, in this case, uh, the base timing is about 10 degrees. That's where the spout, uh, the pip signal ends. And then the computer's advancing that a little bit to about 20 degrees at idle, give or take. So uh, what I found when I went back and took a look at this thing stalling, I'm just going to show it to you. Give me a second. All right, this is not live. This is what I recorded earlier. This is with the spout sensor or the spout connector unplugged. And here's the stall. Let me zoom in on that. And there it is. So you have the, the pip signal the whole time. You have the uh, injector is being fired the whole time. You'll notice that they're slowing down though. That's because the engine RPM is dropping radi radically as it's stalled. So you're seeing all these signals take longer and longer because the, the engine RPM is just reducing. Here's the normal engine RPM with them spaced about like this at about seven or 800 at idle. So as you can see, I maintain my 12 volts. I maintain my injector. And the PIP signal kept on going, but the coil firing event did not. Let's see if I have any other captures here that are worth looking at. That's about it, I guess. The um, I haven't been able to catch it in the act with the spout connector unplugged and having the car stall. But what I what I have been able to monitor is the spout signal is there, and looking at the notches, it all lines up. I'm afraid I'm going to have to uh, if I really want to catch this in the act for you guys on film, I'd, I'd have to maybe let this thing completely cool down. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have the time for that today. i got a party to go to, so I may have to kick this can down the road to catch that last little bit. But either way, it doesn't change the, it doesn't change the call. The timing hasn't changed on the motor, and the spout signal is there. This is just with me shutting it off, and you can see that immediately everything dies. But the spout signal is identical to the PIP signal. You guys can see that. Spout signal is identical to the PIP signal anytime the spout is unplugged. And then when you plug the spout in, the spout signal starts moving around with timing as the computer controls it, and the PIP signal remains the same but adds the notch. And now the car is sitting here running with the spout connector in for, I don't know, five or ten minutes now and it won't stall. Let me see if I can catch something on film for you guys. Oh, it just stalled. Stop, stop. Look at that. We got lucky. It stalled right in front of us. That's actually really good news because that's what I needed it to do to prove this thing out. That's really cool. All right, so if you look at the, the relationship between pip and spout, here's the moment where it was about to stall out. You see that the coil is firing, and all of a sudden the coil doesn't fire right here. So looking up... We see the blue notches lining up with the green spout along the way. Here's where it stalls. And look, 
The blue notches are, are still there. The spout line is still there. And they continue until finally the motor turns over so slow that there's no more signal. That's cool. I'm trying to zoom out and maybe catch this. I don't know if I can help with the glare. Can you guys even see that? I caught this once before, although I can't remember which waveform it was that I saved that caught it, but this is definitely the one we want to save. This shows that spout is still there. The computer is still recognizing spout, right? Here's, it's already stalled at this point, but you can still see that the falling edge of spout lines up with the notch in the pip, and then there's the regular edge of the pip. So what you're seeing here is the computer, my phone's about to die, the computer is still in charge of timing. The timing is still just a few degrees away from the same pip edge as it was before. So timing has not moved, but the coil just simply quit firing. It goes from, this is each coil firing event. This is where it, char it grounds and charges, and then it holds that charge, and then it releases and burns. And uh, I'll zoom in on that just so you guys can see that a little bit better. This is what a one coil firing event looks like. This is ignition coil primer if you guys are following along. The coil is not grounded so it's got like 14 volts in it on the ground wire. When you ground the coil it grounds it all the way. Then it current limits and holds it by pulsing the ground. And then it fires the coil, burns, and then quits firing the coil. And then whatever energy is left over oscillates until it completely, you know, dissipates. So that is exactly what a perfectly good coil firing event looks like. And as you can see, it just goes from that to nothing. So here's the, here's the reason. We know it's the module and not the coil. The coil is not being turned on. If you saw a bad coil, the, the module would ground it and it just wouldn't fire. Or it wouldn't even be 12 volts to begin with, but you can tell it's 12 volts. Here it is uh, between 3 and 22 volts. It's kind of halfway. The scale is kind of poor resolution here, but that's definitely 12 volts. And with the Pico, I can actually come down here and monitor that. Get on that line and touch it. Hit the button, and you can see that uh, that is the red trace B. It's 12.2 volts. So that tells you the windings of the coil are good because I'm looking at the ground wire of the coil. So the 12 volts coming from the, the uh, EC relay or the fuse box or wherever it's coming from winds through the windings of the coil, comes out the other side, and I can monitor that 12 volts on the negative wire. So right there, that alone, being at 12 volts instead of zero, tells me that the coil windings are fine. We are definitely looking at a problem with no signal to the coil. It's not being turned on, and yet, when we look at the signal from the computer's okay, there's the spout signal. It's just a few degrees off from the PIP signal. This looks exactly like it looks when it's running. So we're not losing PIP. We're not losing spout. Spout is not a, a, a wiring problem or a wiring short that's making the computer, you know, do something goofy. It just simply decides to quit firing the coil. The module is junk. So let me look at some of these questions you guys maybe have. What made the coil stop firing? Uh, just what I just said, the, the module is not grounding the coil to turn it on. Normally, the ignition module, when it wants to, based on the last pip or spout signal, whichever one the computer is using, it uses pip, the falling edge of pip, if the if the spout connector is unplugged but it uses spout the falling edge of spout if the connector is plugged in the computer the sorry the ignition module monitors these rising and falling edges and it knows when this one fell that the next time it should start charging the coil is based on a time frame from when the last one quit charging 
So it's actually firing the next one based on the last one. So the computer, and it, it quits firing the spark. Sorry, it quits uh, charging the coil right there on the, on the leading edge of spout. So I don't know if you guys can see that trace, but let me get my fat fingers out of the way. Right here is where the, the coil's turned on. It goes to ground. It's held open for just a couple of milliseconds. Then it's held in the voltage at a half ground. That's called current limiting. And then it fires, and that firing line of the coil lines up exactly with the rising edge of spout. The, uh, the pip signal, if I unplug this, it would, it would fall onto the falling edge of the pip signal instead. This part here is where the, the coil is actually burning in the cylinder and then it shut off. And I can actually measure, just if you guys want to see something fun, I can measure that time frame. So that's the starting point of the coil being charged. And here's the ending point of the coil being charged. And this tells us the coil dwell time. And that dwell time on this car is I bet my phone's dying. I don't even know if you guys can see this. The dwell time is 489 milliseconds. Um, I'm sorry. That's the, the total time. The dwell time is 6 milliseconds. Well, my phone's dead, so I better get off.